we begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and their Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome, everyone. A day in which we celebrate call and commitment. As we prepare to celebrate these holy mysteries, let us ask for God's pardon and peace.
Let us pray. O God, who willed that the grace of baptism should flourish in these your servants so that they might strive to follow more closely in the footsteps of your Son, grant, we pray, that constantly seeking evangelical perfection, they may add to the holiness of your church and increase her apostolic zeal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear the readings. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Nagserbi ni ubing nga Samuel kini Yahweh iti babaen ti pangidalan ni Eli. Kadagidi nga aldaw, manmano ti mensahe nga agapo kini Yahweh. Manmano met ti parmata nga agapo ken kwana. Iti may sarabi i, Matmaturog ni Eli iti kwarto na, nakapsuten ti panangkita ni Eli. Matmaturog met ni Samuel iti santuario nga ayan ti lakasa, ti tulag ti Diyos. Sisisigged pa'y laing ti silaw sa diay. Inawagan ni Yahweh ni Samuel, 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 at daak dito'y apo, kinuna ni Samuel, ket nagtaray anapan kaya ni Eli. At tuyak apo, ta inayaban na, kinuna na. Ngem kinuna ni Eli, anak ko, di ka inayaban, agsubli ka ti iddam. Nagsubli nga rod, anagidda ni Samuel. Inawagan man ni Yahweh ni Samuel, Saan nga amot ti ubing ani yawe ti umawawag gaputa di pa'y nagsau idi tin kwana. Bimangon nga rod anapan kene Eli ket kenunana. At tuyak apo ta inawagan na. Ngem insong bat ni Eli. Anak ko saan ka inayaban? Agsubli ka ti iddam. Iti maikatlo adaras, inayaban ni Yahweh ni Samuel. Bimangon ni Samuel, anapan ke ni Eli, ket kinunana. At tuyak apo, ta inayaban na. Ket nabigbig ni Eli, ani Yahweh ti mga awag iti ubing. Isot gapuna, a kinunana kenkwana. Agsubli ka iti eddam, Ket no awagan na kapay, konam, agsao ka apo, tadomdom ngeg to'y adipen mo. Nagsubli nga rod ang nagidda ni Samuel. Demteng ni Yahweh, ket nagtakder sana inawagan ni Samuel, akasidi damo. Samuel, Samuel, insungbat ni Samuel. Agsao ka apo, dumdumgeg, to'y adipen mo. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to, to the Romans. Thưa anh em, vì Thiên Chúa xót thương chúng ta, tôi khuyên nhủ anh em hãy hiến dâng thân mình làm của lễ sống động, thánh thiện và đẹp lòng Thiên Chúa. Đó là cách thức xứng hợp với để anh em thờ phượng người. Anh em đừng có rập theo đời này, nhưng hãy cải biến con người anh em bằng cách đổi mới tâm thần. Hầu có thể nhận ra đâu là ý Thiên Chúa, cái gì là tốt, cái gì đẹp lòng Chúa, cái gì hoàn hảo. Dựa vào ân sủng Thiên Chúa đã ban cho tôi, tôi xin nói với từng người trong anh em, đừng đi quá mức khi đánh giá mình. Nhưng hãy đánh giá mình cho đúng mức Mỗi người tùy theo lượng đức tin Thiên Chúa đã phân phá cho Cũng như trong một thân thể Chúng ta có nhiều bộ phận Mà các bộ phận không có cùng một chức năng Thì chúng ta cũng vậy Tuy nhiều nhưng chỉ là một thân thể trong Đức Kitô Mỗi người liên đới với những người khác Như những bộ phận của một thân thể Chúng ta có những đặc sủng khác nhau Tùy theo ân sủng Thiên Chúa ban cho mỗi người Được ơn làm ngôn sứ Thì phải nói sao cho hợp Cho phù hợp với đức tin Được ơn phục vụ Thì phải phục vụ Ai dạy bảo Thì cứ dạy bảo Ai khuyên răn Thì cứ khuyên răn Ai phân phát Thì phải chân thành Ai chủ tọa thì phải có nhiệt tâm Ai làm việc bác ái thì vui vẻ mà làm Lòng bác ái không được giả hình giả bộ Anh em hãy gớm ghét điều dữ Tha thiết với điều lành Thương mến nhau với tình huynh đệ Coi người khác trọng hơn mình Nhiệt thành, không trễ nải Lấy tinh thần số sáng mà phục vụ Chúa Hãy vui mừng vì có niềm hy vọng, cứ kiên nhẫn lúc gặp gian truân và chuyên cần cầu nguyện. Hãy chia sẻ với những người trong dân thánh đang lâm cảnh thiếu thốn và ân cần tiếp đãi khánh đến nhà. The vua of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him, nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race, the light 
that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave the power to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. From his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace, because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only Son, God, who is at the Father's side has revealed him. The Gospel of the Lord. A phrase comes to mind. And they all lived happily ever after. And they all lived happily ever after. This is a phrase that I first came to love when I was about five or six years old in kindergarten. Because after we were done with all of our heavy studies for the day, how to use crayons, how to sit up straight, how to not fight with the fellow next to us. After those heavy lessons of the day, it was story time. And everybody got to get up and go sit on the rug in the middle of the room, and the teacher would tell us a story. This was the best part of the day for me. And whether it was fairy tales or fantasies or fables, the ending was always the same, and they all lived happily ever after. That phrase so captured my imagination and that of some of the other children with me that we would start shouting it out even before the story got underway. It took a while for the teacher to tell us, wait a minute, you have to hear the story before you get to say, happily ever after. Within a couple of months, we learned to do it. It wasn't that hard. Here in church, I think we sometimes have a phrase that's very similar to happily ever after. At the end, we say the word of the Lord, and I hear back, Thanks be to God. Or the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now it's important that we don't start with that. Just like you don't put happily ever after at the beginning of a story, you don't put praise and glory at the beginning of the story either. You know, if you put your happily ever after too soon, you miss the adventure. You miss the knights charging forward to the castle. You miss Rapunzel throwing down her golden hair. You miss uh, the potential for a very nice fable about a fox and a hen. You never know what you miss if you jump over to happily ever after. Imagine, too, in the stories we had today in Scripture, what would happen 
if we jump over too quick. What would it have been with Samuel, who was called as a little one? Samuel, and he said, oh, I'm listening, and he goes to Eli. Eli says, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. You're dreaming. And a second time he says, Samuel. He says, go back to bed. You're dreaming. A third time Eli got the drift. Aren't we glad that Eli did not say, and they all lived happily ever after? Because then we would have missed Samuel showing the power of God in a great prophet and judge of his people. We would have missed all of his ministry of making peace in a time of persecution. We would have missed him anointing kings and challenging their power when they abused it. We would have missed books entire of the Testament if Samuel had said, and they all lived happily ever after. Or imagine the prologue to St. John's Gospel. Imagine if we got to the line here that we just read. And I said, in the beginning was the Word. And true light was coming into the world. And they all lived happily ever after. We've missed something along the way. Important things. Like, for instance, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Things like, and to all those who did receive him can become children of God. And we would have missed Jesus' teaching. And we would have missed his birth, his death, his resurrection, his ascension to glory, and his gift of the Spirit and everything that has flowed from it. We don't want to put an end to the story too quickly. And so maybe you came today, maybe even the three of you, in a mood of happily ever after. But I think it would be too early in the story to think of happily ever after. Could I suggest a different phrase that might suggest better what today is about. I take it from an astro, uh, I'm sorry, from a nuclear physicist, Edward Teller, raised as a Jew in Hungary, but pretty much an agnostic. He was mostly looking deeply into the burgeoning field of nuclear physics and discovering as you look deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the matter, there's no there there. There's no stuff. Instead, there are only particles and more particles and particles after particles. Here's his phrase. When it is time to come to the end of the light of all we know, and step into the darkness, there will be solid ground. When we have come to the end of all we know, the light of all we know, it is time to step into the darkness, and there will be solid ground. So let's take the first part of that phrase. We have men here today who want to take a step further into their adventure into God. They're coming to the end if they truly want to draw closer to God, coming to the end of what we do know and all that is knowable. They challenge themselves to step further beyond what is known into some darkness. And so it's a little bit like stepping off and wondering what comes next. At least we know this. If you're getting ready to step out of the light and into the darkness of the face of God, 
there are some things that will hinder you in taking that step. You don't need a lot of possessions to take a step into the darkness. You don't need the protection and the care and comfort of your own family to step into the darkness. You don't need your own plans for a career, for a job, for a stable place where you will live your life happily ever after. You don't need those things. And so as you step into the darkness, you abandon possessions, family, your own way, as you vow poverty, chastity, and obedience. This is the way that you step into the darkness. And it's a little bit frightening, I can guarantee you. Will there be anything there? The physicist says there will be. He says there will be solid ground. My brothers, there will be solid ground for you. You will find companions like these, SVDs and Holy Spirit sisters, who have already dedicated their lives to poverty, celibacy, and obedience in order that the goodness and kindness of God will be evident in our life and service. Your only solid ground, my guess, is your community who have already taken a step into the darkness. This is where you can find solid ground if you want to take that step. We don't know what we're going to find even by the end of today. We commit ourselves to missionary service. We try and live together in relative peace as men and women from all over the world. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's all right. All the married people know what I'm talking about anyway. Because our pastor here locally, Father Bob Hines, is a wonderful man. He saw a couple approaching him on the street one day. He knew they were celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary. And he came up to them and said, Oh, you are such a beautiful couple and such an inspiration to us. How do you do it? He asked them. And they responded, well, Father, sometimes we're in love. Other times, we're just married. <laughs> Welcome to your solid ground. Sometimes you will be in love with us. Other times, you will be vowed to us. And slowly but surely, we will find a solid ground. There will also probably come a time when even this solid ground gives way and there is nothing solid on which to put your feet. We needn't be afraid. It happened to Jesus too. He looked for his mother and his stepfather Joseph. He looked for his larger clan. He had the sense of God with him all the time. He founded a community of disciples who more or less understood him, but Jesus loved them, and they were for him solid ground at many points. But Jesus was also crucified and stretched out between heaven and earth. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And even Jesus' solid ground was no longer so solid. What shall we do? Continue to trust for certain. Moments like that will come to you. They've come to all of us here. Jesus rose from the dead and promised us new life. We follow a Lord who is crucified, died, buried, and rose from the dead. 
we pass over with the Lord. We hope to rise with him. So as you step into the darkness, you'll find solid ground. And when that gives way, uh, I didn't tell you the whole phrase from the physicist. He actually said this. When you've come to the edge of the light of all you know, and it is time to step into the darkness, you will find solid ground, or you will learn to fly. So today, let us trust in the solid ground, or we will learn to fly. The Spirit will teach us. And they all lived happily ever after. The following members have requested to take perpetual vows in the Society of the Divine Word. Paul Malini Aquino. Present. Tien Đức Nguyễn. Present. Hien Văn Phạm. My brothers, what do you ask of God and of the Church? We ask to commit ourselves to Christ and to His Church by pronouncing perpetual vows in the Society of the Divine Word. All together, may the Lord grant you His help. May the Divine Word be your guide. May the Spirit be your lot. My confers, through baptism, you are already dead to sin and consecrated to the Lord. Are you prepared to unite yourselves more closely to him by the bond of perpetual profession in the society of the divine word? I am so resolved. And are you resolved with the help of God's grace to bind yourselves forever to poverty, chastity, and obedience in imitation of Christ, the incarnate word? I am so resolved. And are you resolved to place yourselves under the guidance of the Holy Spirit at the service of the gospel and the church to preach the good news of salvation as divine word missionaries? I am so resolved. May the one who began this work in you bring it to fruitful completion. May the divine word walk with you and grant you confidence, strength, and comfort. May the spirit of holiness grant you the gift of perseverance. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to kneel as we prepare to praise and beg the presence of the Trinity. We pray to the triune God who has called these servants to follow Christ with complete dedication. May God bless them with his grace and strengthen them in their resolve, following the example of the holy men and women who have gone before us.
Father, to see and hear and feel, to read and share the Word, in openness to the guiding Spirit, to do the will of our Father, to be disciples, chaste, poor, obedient, immersed in the life of the Trinity. We are called, like St. Arnold, to imitate the Word made flesh in self-emptying, to follow Jesus Christ through cross and resurrection, in suffering and joy. Sent by Jesus, we leave, together as brothers from many cultures. We pass over to be with others, offering and receiving good news. With respect, understanding, compassion, and love. Led by the Spirit, we enter. Joyfully, full of hope, we serve, share, and become one with all peoples, especially with those on the frontiers of our faith and the margins of society. And so we witness to and help to build a loving community of all humanity with the triune God who loves us. It is in this spirit, therefore, that I, Paul Malinit Aquino, solemnly promise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to live for life, chastity, poverty, and obedience according to the constitutions of the Society of the Divine Word. I make these vows before you, Father Provincial Thomas Ashman, as the representative of the Superior General and in the presence of this community. It is in this spirit, therefore, that I, Tian Le Nguyen, solemnly promise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to live for life, chastity, poverty, and obedience, according to the constitutions of the Society of the Divine World. I make these vows before you, Father Provincial Thomas Asmans, as the representative of the Superior General and in the presence of this community. It is in this spirit, therefore, thus, I, here one five, solemnly reaffirm to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to live for life, chastity, poverty, and obedience, according to the constitutions of the Society of the Divine World. I make these vows before you, Father Provincial Thomas Asman, as a representative of the Superior General and in this presence of this community. May the Spirit of Christ 
come down upon us today and fill us with all manner of strength. And may his good gift bless us now and forever. Amen. Please stand and let us extend our hands in blessing upon them. Almighty God, you are the source of all holiness. Look with favor on these men who have heard the call of your love. Send them the spirit of holiness and help them to fulfill in faith what you have enabled them to promise in joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Maybe a round of applause. Brothers, we welcome you to your solid ground. Let us offer our prayers to God who is so good and kind. Para sa ating banal na Santo Papa Francisco, na nawa'y patuloy niyang gabayan ang ating simbahan na may habag at pag-ibig. Ipanalangin din natin ang lahat ng namumuno sa ating gobyerno at mga leader sa ating lipunan na naway tularan nila ang mga magagandang halimbawa halimbawang isina buhay ni Maria na nagpapakita ng lubos na tiwala sa Panginoon. Biyayain mo sila ng karunungan upang palaganap nila ang kapayapaan at hustisya sa buong mundo. Let's pray to the Lord. Lord Chúng ta cùng cầu xin cho những người nghèo khổ, những người bị áp bức, bắt hại, những người đau yếu bệnh tật và những nạn nhân của thiên tai dịch bệnh cảm nghiệm được tình yêu và ơn chữa lành của Chúa trong cuộc đời họ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. Prions pour une augmentation des vocations à la vie religieuse spécialement pour les missionnaires du Verbe divin, les sœurs servantes du Saint-Esprit, les sœurs servantes du Saint-Esprit de l'adoration perpétuelle. Puissent nos jeunes hommes et femmes être ouverts à l'appel et répondre généreusement à l'invitation de Dieu au service religieux. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. For our brothers who have professed their vows today, may they find lasting fulfillment in the dedication of their lives to the Society of the Divine Word and the Church. We also pray for their families and friends who have supported and nurtured their religious vocations. May the infinite goodness of our Lord shine upon them always. Let's pray to the Lord. 
Lord, these are our prayers this day, and we pray too that the darkness of sin and the night of unbelief will vanish before the light of the word and the spirit of grace. And may the heart of Jesus live in the hearts of all. Amen. Praised be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim this great mystery of our faith.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
On behalf of the Divine Word Theologate community, it's my pleasure to offer a word of thanks to several people. Uh, firstly, to Father Tom Ashman and the Divine Word communities here at Techni, both at our residence and in our novitiate, Father Tom, for investing so personally today in today's ceremony in his inspirational homily. I'd like to take a moment to thank also the Philippine American Choral Project and the Seraphim Choir of St. Henry Parish. I think indeed some stunning music this afternoon that probably deserves a special round of applause. music that will make a memorable uh, professional final vows. You won't forget it soon. Uh, thank you also to our MCs, Father Nyan Chran and Father um, Lin Pham somewhere, I think helping also. Uh, Father Jim Policki for doing the video work for us. Uh, Father Carlos Paniagua, the chaplain here at Divine Word International and the Divine Word International staff. Uh, for helping us with so many of the logistics for the celebration. And uh, to Miss Lucy Kassan, who's uh, prepared food for us uh, for, I don't know, the 25th year or so in a row. And uh, food is waiting for us downstairs. We can dismiss as soon as Father uh, Tom gives us a final blessing and a dismissal. Thank you all for coming today. Sure. Yes, I'm really sure about it. Then put the 19th of September down. We have a hen here. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? Good thing. <laughs> At least this is the picture. Nineteenth of September.
Thank you. So are you sure? I'll put down the date to make certain you don't forget, okay? I am very sure. take pictures. <laughs>